So what do you want to do when you want to hear the voice of USC football and it's not game day? You bring the voice of USC football to Locked On USC. That's what's coming up next. You are Locked On Trojans, your daily podcast on the USC Trojans. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Fight on, everyone. I'm your host, Mark Hulkin, and you are watching Locked On USC. And thanks for making Locked On USC your first listen every day. Whether you're watching on YouTube or wherever you download your podcast, remember we're free. And if you are watching on YouTube and you haven't done already, hit that you hit that subscribe button. It means a lot more than you know. And again, without you watching, I'm kind of wasting my time. But I'm not going to waste any more time. We've got a really cool special guest, the voice of USC football, Pete Arbogast. Thanks for joining us. How are you doing today? Ooh. There you are. Thanks again. Um, so we're going to get right into this, Pete. We've uh, we've seen USC for three games, and their most recent game, they again had a really dominant performance at home, forty-five to seventeen over Fresno State. Go ahead, tell me. You know, I've already done my game review. I've given grades. Give me your assessment of what you saw during that game. Well, I, I would admit to be. Being a little worried uh, because every game is kind of new for this team. We don't know what we have yet, and and, and we, we learn that as we go along. And you know, right, good. That wasn't much of a test. Stanford was better than Rice. Right. Fresno State is better than Stanford, I think. And I think Oregon State is going to be better than Fresno State. So we learn a little more every week as we go along. Um, what did we learn against Fresno State. Uh, we are really good on team. I think we already knew that. Uh, is really that's a nice way of saying I wish they didn't get on the ground. But what Coach Grinch said last week made a lot of me. Uh, and I laughed at it, but then I liked it a lot. If uh, you get in the key and you don't score a basket, they, you, and if you're halfway between third and base and you get thrown out, you don't score. So great, go go crazy for ninety eight yards for the one to the one. Team points. Good luck beating this team. Good luck. No, absolutely, I, and you know, for me, I, I don't know. Maybe for you, you might have a different highlight. I, I thought that last fourth, you know, the fourth down goal line stand. Um, you know, everyone thought, you know what, it's a meaningless score for this team. Uh, Alex Grinch, Lincoln Riley both said it could be could not be any less meaningless because going forward, it's going to mean a lot more to this team because everyone thought the defense was going to be their Achilles heel. Did that kind of surprise you the way they rose up there at the end when they could have just said, Hey, you know, well, you know those were here. twos and three. Those were twos and threes that were playing. Those weren't still very exciting, kind of fun. The crowd got into it. The team got into right. it. Fresno, their guys. So this was twos right. and threes against ones, which is kind of cool. Uh, earlier on, there were, several occasions where the USC defense did rise up, force three and out, and mm. force a punt to the ones that I thought were really meaningful. When the game hadn't decided yet, and the defense decided to, to do some work, they did a little bit against Stanford. They did more of that against Fresno State. Uh, I think they're getting better. I don't know if they're listening to people badmouth them or what, but I just think better. And there's more guys. Mark, one of the most interesting to think about this team, on especially the defensive side of the ball, is that using a ton of guys in these early games, first string, third stringers, guys I don't even have on my board. You know, I got to go to the flip card and, and, and try to find their numbers. So there's a ton of guys that are getting, you know, we, we've we, we, we've heard all about Bird. got five snaps against Rice, and now he's a starter. We thought things were going to happen. I think uh, uh, Poopoo's coming along. I think Corey Foreman's even coming. 
the snaps, the reps he's getting. But Romello, kid, and that, you know, obviously lots of accolades in high school. But guys like that, they're getting a lot of playing time. This cannot go badly if you've got a lot of guys playing because somebody goes down or somebody's cold or somebody's bad that day put in. No, absolutely. And I've said it before probably 97 times, so this will be the 98th time. The recipe for this team to win is very simple. Um, you have to score touchdown for touchdown with USC. So far through their first three games, and I'm cutting it short on on drives because they, they've been more successful in, in their first game than their second and third game, but first three drives of each game, touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. And if the defense just gives them, you know, three, two, three, maybe even four turnovers on downs throughout the game, that's creating a takeaway, um, even though technically it's not a turnover. It, it is. And I, again, if you are the opposition and you cannot go possession for possession with USC, you are not going to beat them. I don't care how it, good you are. It reminds me of uh, uh, Andrew Luck and Stanford. I brought, I brought this up on the broadcast the other day where – one day at the Coliseum, uh, Stanford had been blown. We stuck with them for the whole game. We matched them score for score until we went into the end zone in the time. There were games against Oregon and those great Oregon teams where we would match them score for score for about two and a half quarters. Then we'd spit the bit and give up something. They were up two touchdowns, and good luck from there. Trying to catch those guys. That is the same thing I get with this offensive team. If you can force a couple of three and outs or a turnover and you get up by two scores and you have the ball on the SC offense, that's that's almost game over. Right. Yeah. We, now, we listen, must... I, I, I want to go back to the stat. I just, you saw me leaning over and, and going to Go, my, go, go. This is first, your show, Pete. You go. No. Uh, uh, my, my stat guy from years ago, Mark Hoppy, and I put together uh, um, a, a statistic called uh, percentage of possible yards, a simple, okay. simple equation. Uh, if you it, you can throw turnovers into it or or kickoff returns that kind of thing into it, and it, it makes a difference. But if you just take the possible yards you could get on it, all your drives added together, and the yards you did get on your drives added together, you come up with a percentage. So this last week, USC got five hundred and thirty-eight. 635 possible yards. Be all the yards for a field goal. So if, if, if you come up 30 yards short, I've given you the 75 if you make it, if you make the field goal. So 538 to 635 is 85% of your possible yards. That's amazing. 15% of their yards out on the field. Meantime, Fresno State was 456 of 756 for 60%. So you beat them 85 to 60. They left 40% of their possible yards on the field. One of it has jumped off the page this year for me is that in the first three, none of the USC opponents have had what I consider to be a short field under 60 yards reverse. Rice was two for eight on their long fields. Stanford was two for eight on their long fields. Fresno State was two for six on their long fields for a touchdown and a field goal. And so these teams, not, the SC's playing field position great. They're, they're cashing in their possible yards, 86% against Rice, 79% against Stanford, 85% against Fresno State. It, they are unbeatable and the turnover margin where it is. Nobody will touch them if, if that happens. And, and just, just to kind of put a bow on the stat party we're having here, uh -huh. uh, look at their red, their red zone defense efficiency. I think it's at right. uh, 53%. So you can drive between the 20s on this team, but when you get to the 20, um, you're either going to settle for a field goal or you're not getting anything. That, to me, is when you're watching this defense, it doesn't look like 2008 USC defense, but you're getting a similar type of result. Right now, they're they're averaging, what, 17 points a game they're giving up. That's a, For this defense, where everybody thought, oh, man, this is going to be a shootout team, so far, through three games, and granted, it hasn't been the greatest opposition. They're doing what they're supposed to do, and that's what matters. Last year was a measure bad <laughs> year for USC football, and <laughs> and shine that on the stat I was telling you about. 
is that right. they only picked up 59% of their yards a year ago compared to what do we have, about 82% right now. Five, pretty good year, right? Sure. Uh, a couple, S- couple good players S- on the team. SC was over 90 once, over 80 a bunch of times. Um, and a 70% hit rate possible yards. I mean, that, and that team was as good as they as good as they so, so it's a big stat. Turnovers are here. Everything's going well so far. We'll continue to go well is the question. Yep. And we're gonna get yeah. what's going to happen when the adversity hits. We're going to find out what adversity is because their next game is in a place where they sometimes they face some adversity for whatever reason. Oregon State is a place where USC, even though the record doesn't show it, they struggle to play and win. And we're going to talk about that here coming up. But first, uh, you, everyone needs to get on over to LinkedIn.com because these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people. Get that out up there. <laughs> find the right people for your team faster and for free. You know, I've had an opportunity to use LinkedIn. Um, it is incredibly easy to use. You can go on there. You add your job. You add the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word. Uh, that you're hiring somebody. It's really that simple. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on the candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate, uh, rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Okay, Pete. So you've been to uh, Corvallis a f- couple times, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> I've been more, there a few more times. More than I'd like. I'd like. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most annoying sounds to me is their first down. Thing, so- yes. Yes. And we hear it. We, yeah, we hear it a lot. So USC is going to be facing three and zero Oregon State. They came into the Coliseum last year and took out. Uh, let's see, nineteen sixty to twenty one. That's uh, what sixty one years of frustration. Yeah. And I think they enjoyed it. Their play by play guy Mike Mike Parley dancing from the press box <laughs> to the elevator afterwards. He was so happy. I can only imagine. So what should uh, USC and, you know, the fans expect when they head up to uh, Corvallis to, to watch them perform in front of 26,000 fans? Did I lose you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, there that's you are. I, I heard everything you said. Okay. When I was there, it was, uh, it was Parker Stadium. Um, and it, and it was no better than a junior yard. And so they're they're making that in, into much. But somebody gave them fifty million bucks to, and said, "Go ahead." That's the tenth hall they've done in the place. I'm not a Corvallis fan, an Oregon State fan. My childhood, even though it wasn't necessarily there in 1964. Well, you're not old enough to remember this, but you've. Uh, Played an unscheduled Oregon State, and the uh, Beavers had a four and one record in conference. Had a three, three and one record in conference. So the Oregon State's extra win was a seven six victory over Idaho. Shouldn't matter. Uh, oh, by the way, I'm defeated Notre Dame this Saturday. So how about if Notre Dame maybe think that vote? And so he's down 17 nothing. I can beat Notre Dame on 84 Z. Sherman. 17 place going nuts. And I go home and I'm listening to the old uh, Fred Hessler show on KMPC, which is the Bruin station, and uh, waiting uh-huh. for the vote to come in to announce that elected to go 
go to the Rose Bowl and play Michigan. God, the uh, conference presidents voted uh, Oregon State in, and the deciding vote was cast by UCLA, Oregon State. So they've never been to the Rose Bowl since then, and, and that was good. They've Karma. never been since. And if team, Chance Nolan can throw, his receivers are back. He's got a decent runner. I don't think Jay Baylor was. It's good, but I'm not here with Baylor. Um, they've got a, a decent line, and Jonathan Smith is a really good coach, former quarterback for them, uh, and make it difficult for SC uh, on the defensive side of the ball. But I don't, I don't think they can stop this SC offense. And and, and like we talked about already, I believe in my heart of mind now state game, except on the road, maybe might take a little while longer. As I'm thinking, sure. SC is going to run away with this thing. Yeah, I, I definitely, I, I'm starting to, to lean that direction. I look at the fact that Oregon State gave up 35 points to Fresno State at Fresno. Granted, Oregon, will, you know, the Beavers will be back home. Um, they're going to be without their, you know, one of their top tight ends and one of their running backs. So um, depth could be an issue for them if USC continues to bring that physical style um, where they're knocking on the other team's best players. Out the, the loss of Go ahead. Is, is huge. And, and Treshawn Harrison, outstanding wide receiver, are, are their leading tight end all the time without Musgrave right. out of their arsenal for sure. That's like, that's like losing Meyer for Notre Dame. Huge. It is. And, and even with that, um, strange things happen up there. You get fog and it's, you know what? I'm, I'm actually going to think there might be fog this weekend because it's going to be incredibly warm during the day. And we know that it cools down there in the evening. So when those two things kind of come together, you, uh, you might need a Reggie Bush or a Dominique bird to, uh, <laughs> to split the scene, so to speak. Um, yeah, I, I don't I, as you as you recall, recall, Mark, I, I did the fog bowl on on I, the sideline for about. Yeah. Um, I, I heard it. I had to argue. With, well, I had to argue. Yeah, right, right. right. And here, the short story is that I saw what was coming, and I had done the uh, um, the potato bowl in uh, Bakersfield, Biddy College, and, and Fresno City College for the state championship when I was at LACC, and okay. the same. I was up in Spux, and you couldn't see anything but the, the little helmets bouncing up and down over the fog. It's different than regular fog. Truly fog grows from the ground. So it would come up right. to here, and you could see up here, but you, you couldn't see your feet. <laughs> uh, so I, this this was fog fog. This is regular. I told my, my producer, Ann, I said, if if we make a call the game up here, and we can't see anything, and the TV cameras are on, and they all they see is gray, we're now calling a game that we can't see. We have to go down on the field and call this game. And she's like, I'm down there. And I said, I'll go myself. I don't care. <laughs> One of the, the handheld mics for the sideline. I'll go down there and do the game. And she said, I'll right. go with it. And she was kind of. So we walked the sideline. Off. The only play I didn't see was a long pass the side of the field. I was standing on about the Oregon State side of the other 50 yards. I just had to wait for uh, the roar or the yeah. grumble. Yeah, yeah, and, and right. it, they, they cheered, so they caught it, and then we took off and ran down the other end of the field. That Dominique Bird catch is four yards away from me. If I, if I dropped the mic, I could have picked that off and gone. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> what a night. What a night. And Paul, Paul McDonald was my color man at the time, uh, the great All-American uh, quarter. And, and Paul said, I think I'll stay up here. And the color up here. I said, Paul, you can't see anything. I'm, what are you, you going to talk about? He said, I'll, I'll take care of it. So for the entire game, Paul stayed in the booth. He just based on what I called as a play by play. That is oh, real talent. That's amazing. That is simply amazing. And he was, he, we didn't tell anybody that we had done that. And the boosters looked at us on the sideline like, you know, what the hell? this guy doing down there um, <laughs> I, I think i think the funniest bowl night 
was uh, Lindsay Soto was filling in as our sideline announcer that night for Lindsay, I think right. for, for Petros, I think. At any rate, uh, she had a report. Talk about a she had some great upgrade. Uh, oh, yeah, well, one way. <laughs> I'm being uh, trying to be. Uh, if she had a report, she would she would chime in like everybody does on the sideline. There's a quarter. And she had a report, and I, and I uh, she would me. So I so I said, Lindsay Soto's got uh, uh, got some on the field. Uh, let's go over to Lindsay. <laughs> and she, she just, lean the microphone. <laughs> yeah, so it was a different kind of night. It's different all the way around. So, as far as I, I, what could affect Caleb Williams on the road at Oregon State before we, you know, I think we both agree the USC should come away with a victory. Well, he uh, had. I think the line what? at six and a half is. Oh, I was just saying. I, I think USC is going to cover. So, I was just going to say what um, what uh, not not on betting purpose. What would keep Caleb from okay. performing at his top level? We've we've seen little spurts where he, where you know, and when I we talk about little spurts of, it, of playing bad, it, it's like looking at the mole on the supermodel. It's not bad. It's just hey, mm-hmm. we know he's capable of doing better. What's causing he, any problems? Because you can't drop. I think he had those problems last week, and I'm glad he had a rough patch in the end of the second quarter against Fresno. Because by having that, he he became alerted to, oh, it's not going to be as easy as it was at Stanford in the first half or against Rice the whole game. Not going to be as easy. Uh, I got to wake up and play to make quicker decisions, which he didn't have against Fresno State. And I think so was a bullet. And now he takes that uh, to the Oregon State game. So I don't think I mean, that. I mean, there, if you're smart, there's much pressure on a guy again, but. He can he can run you to death. Uh, yeah. So, uh, how, pick your the poison. Are you... com- I was going to say the most telling c- comment that I heard post game was from Jeff Tedford. You know, um, they didn't do anything special, and if USC isn't running anything special with their play calls right now, imagine how good they are when they do start running some special plays. They try to get they try to do one trick play. Caleb got positive yardage out of it. Um, I just don't know that you need to run trickeration with this team. So I've always been told, if you do it, I've been told that that you give other teams something to think about for a few minutes. And if you could do times six plays. They got to pay attention to, and then who knows what your seventh, eighth one's going to be? Then I think that's why they throw stuff like that out. Um, I think you're right. Grant, they've they've run a couple of things in clutch situations that they had to, a couple of slip screens. They've done a couple of things that they had to do. Well, I tell you, Caleb was looking long all first quarter, most of the second quarter. Uh, then he finally decided, hey, I got out there. Besides the long one, I could I can go short. We we can drive. Those drives were great. Who cares how? You- score just keep going thank you to me yeah a- absolutely you know we- we've heard that in the past we would love for usc to look like stanford when they play uh-huh. that first half those those drives of that looked like stanford football so, yeah yeah we ran the ball passed the ball great and we played just enough defense to be way ahead there's nothing wrong with when Arizona State comes. That when you get to Utah, you feel pretty good about what you're doing, and you could take take your, your full. Yeah, yeah, we're having a little bit of a technical challenge here. So, what do you if you Pete, what do you see from this team going forward based on what we've seen? Um, looking past Oregon State, what is the future of this team? Based on what you they know to, now, three games. They, they want to, okay, uh, and especially on the defensive side of the ball, and keep doing what's working on the offensive side of the ball. 
Um, the Utah game is obviously the, the linchpin game of the middle. Of, uh, they should win a game before that and every game up to the UCLA game after that. If you lose to Utah, the UCLA game with one loss, there's a fair chance that if you beat UCLA, you're in the Pac-12 championship. If you beat, we afford to lose to UCLA, you're still probably in the Pac-12 championship game. But of course, and are undefeated. You're talking about playoffs at that point. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 if this team stays healthy at all the right positions and you know, we're talking obviously quarterback, staying healthy at running back, uh, relatively healthy on that defensive line. Uh, this team is going to be really difficult to beat. Um, I look at the schedule. It sets up perfectly. You you said it. Utah is going to be, will be the key. Um, mm -hmm. You get by Utah. This team is living on more confidence that they know what to do with, and we know what, what a confident locker room can do with a quality coaching staff and elite players. We've seen it before. I'm looking forward to this one, and obviously the one of the Utah game, obviously. And, and you know, there are rap games, really. They take the week off after Utah, and then they go. Maybe that's the one paying great attention to because you're coming off and had the week off. So I think you probably get rid of that feeling during the off time. Uh, it's, it's going to be we're now it's going to be a pretty year. It's going to be a great year. Can't say it yet. There's not enough data. There's not evidence yet. We don't know. We just don't know all of the things that we need to know about it. Last year, in the in the, at the end of the season, when they were, you know, at the end, it wasn't quite quite the end, but there were three or four games. He had a pretty good idea of what their tendencies <laughs> were, and right. hence was going to play out probably. Uh, and and we but we don't have all the information we need yet. We have a lot of information. We have good information. I want to see more good information. Uh, no, I'm with you. I. I tend to look at things um, real positively right now only because I came in very cynical about this defense. And for me, this defense has, you call it overachieved. Um, I think they've been very opportunistic. And if they just continue to play at this level and the defense just gets better game by game, it's it's hard for me to contain my enthusiasm. So um, well, I understand where you are. Secondary. Good. Secondary's been playing good. The linebackers, they give up too many gash plays in the that stop. Again, That's 17 or 20 points. If you don't score 30 on these guys, you got to beat. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's probably the, the best place to just let, leave it right there. Uh, Locked on USC, we come at you five days a week. You got a special guest this week with Pete Arbogast. Thank you so much, Pete. Uh, we will definitely have you on again. And uh, if you, I don't see you in Corvallis this weekend, uh, we will definitely talk shortly thereafter because I'm going to need your uh, your insight. So thanks again for coming on. Spocks, if nothing else. I don't know what the press box is going to look like. I don't think it's uh, you'll be in the press box. You'll probably stick me outside in a tent somewhere. So <laughs> <laughs> until then, Pete, <laughs> I don't. love you, man. Thanks again. Take care. See you. All right. So that's this episode for Locked On USC. We'll be back again with another one. Again, you get us five days a week when you're not here because I can't give you all the information in, thir you know, I, I can only give you 30 minutes. So you need to head on over to wersc.com. Um, get on all your recruiting information over there. Eric McKinney, Greg Katz, Chris Arledge with his musings. He's got a sharp tongue. So, And also you get your defensive breakdowns with Kevin Bruce. So until then, you know what to do. It starts with an F, ends with an O.